With the strong possibility of Republicans regaining control of the House, Nancy Pelosi could be facing a demotion. If the GOP can regain control, Republican Kevin McCarthy is widely believed to be the guy who will take the reins as the new speaker, guiding the GOP's agenda through Congress. But who is he? Kevin McCarthy was born in Bakersfield, California, to working-class Democrats. He likes to tell people that when he was 19 years old, he won the California lottery and opened a business. I scratch off my first ticket. They have six, just like I just did. All three, and the most money you could win there was $5,000. I scratch off three of them, and all three say $5,000. I was able to start a business when I was 19. However, a fact check by the Washington Post notes that the California lottery wasn't around when McCarthy was 19. It didn't start until he was just, quote, four months shy of turning 21. Regardless of when or how he got the money to do so, he did open a sandwich shop. The deli, aka counter and refrigerator in someone else's shop, was located in the back of his aunt and uncle's yogurt store. McCarthy called his prescient business Subway Before Subway. But perhaps Subway during Subway would have worked better, as there was already a Subway in the same town. Just 14 years after taking credit for Subway, McCarthy was on stage at the Republican National Convention taking credit for the internet. Al Gore did not invent the internet. But the young Republicans and Wyrock.com will revolutionize it. While none of these half-truths are necessarily egregious, they highlight McCarthy's character and all-out effort to stay afloat. This curious relationship with the truth didn't hold him back, and after a stint working for Rep. Bill Thomas, he quickly rose through the ranks of California state politics. In 2006, McCarthy was elected to the U.S. House of Representatives, where he's been ever since. McCarthy has won re-election seven times and spent and raised a lot of money along the way. In a 2015 profile on McCarthy, the LA Times wrote, McCarthy, through his re-election campaign and leadership pack, spent $140,000 on steakhouses alone. He paid $426,000 to companies that charter private jets, covering 46 trips, and he raised at least $10.5 million for his own and party political committee. McCarthy's career in politics is an interesting one. He's not incredibly bombastic like many of his colleagues. Rather than leading a political movement, he waits until there is one and latches onto it. And he's an expert at bridging the gap between the more fringe members of his party and the moderate ones, seemingly alienating few while keeping both factions happy enough to pass legislation together. For years, McCarthy was widely looked at as a moderate Republican, but when Trump won over the party, McCarthy shifted further to the right, at least publicly. McCarthy loudly went to bat defending Trump's racist tweets, introduced a bill that would have fully funded Trump's border wall, and added his name to a lawsuit trying to overturn the 2020 election results. But behind closed doors, it seems McCarthy had a very different opinion about Trump. In the aftermath of the deadly January 6th insurrection, according to a book by two New York Times reporters, McCarthy told a few of his top Republican colleagues in a phone call that he would urge the president to resign, and on the House floor said he believed Trump was responsible for the riot. However, McCarthy claims he never urged Trump to resign. On Twitter, he wrote that the reporting was totally false and wrong. His spokesperson told the New York Times, McCarthy never said he'd call Trump to say he should resign. But the recording of the conversation says otherwise. You know it'll pass the House. I think there's a chance it'll pass the Senate even when he's gone. I do not want to get into any conversation about Pence pardoning anything like that. I mean, the only discussion I would have with him is that I think this will pass. And it would be my recommendation we should be done. McCarthy seems to have made it pretty clear what his position was on Trump and the insurrection he believed the then president fueled. Uh, I've had it with this guy. Uh, what he did is unacceptable. Um, nobody can defend that and nobody should defend it. In response to the recording on the conversation, McCarthy said that he just walked through different scenarios and that he never thought that Trump should resign. Which is interesting considering he was recorded saying he was thinking about asking Trump to resign. And it would be my recommendation we should resign. If it's still unclear where McCarthy really stands, let's take a look at his actions. In the 2022 midterms, a McCarthy-aligned super PAC spent millions of dollars backing several mainstream moderate candidates who were facing Trump-aligned fringe Republicans. But once many of those far-right candidates prevailed, despite McCarthy's best efforts to stifle them, he invited Marjorie Taylor Greene to the rollout of the GOP's midterms agenda. She sat directly behind him, 
foreshadowing establishment Republicans' willingness to work with fringe Republican legislators, giving the people who hate McCarthy but love Green a headache that's seemingly already been there from doing the mental gymnastics that come with subscribing to QAnon conspiracy theories. In the Green-approved speech, McCarthy laid out the GOP's plan. He noted four important pieces of the agenda, an economy that's strong, a nation that's safe, a future that's free, and a government that's accountable. Government should be accountable. No longer special interest. We should work for you, not the other way around like it is today. While he now suggests legislators shouldn't be beholden to special interests, he himself has taken more than $1.8 million from lobbyists, $2.6 million from the oil and gas industry, $2.3 million from the insurance industry, and tens of thousands from big tech companies like Google, Facebook, and Amazon. Saying one thing publicly and doing another thing privately is the game McCarthy's played his whole career. It's a game that's garnered him much success and power. But how long can he keep it up? In a party shifting dramatically to the right, McCarthy's endeavoring to comprehend the GOP and his place in it is ongoing. While he has Green on his side for now, the balancing act is wearing thin on other Trumpian folks like Matt Gates and Steve Bannon, both of whom appear to despise McCarthy. Catering to the establishment and the fringe is a ticking time bomb that McCarthy will have to figure out soon if he doesn't want to go back to making sandwiches.